Hello, this is Olga Yavtic. I'm Miss Regina. I've seen her in America 2003, and this is Fashion Notes. Today, you are going to see two beautiful ladies with us today in the studio, and we are all going to learn many things about skin care, especially this winter has been very harsh for our skin, and she is going to tell us what is the right and what is not the right way how to take care of our skin. I have to introduce this lovely lady today, ladies today. One on my first on my left is Peggy Miner, and next to her is Suzanne Ot Ot uh, Ottinger. Did I say right? Yes, you mm -hmm. did. Well, welcome ladies to the show and I know you are full of knowledge and I'm sure we are all going to learn a lot of things what we are doing wrong you know with our skin skin care which is extremely important in our other shows we are going to do makeup also and it's very important to have a clean and also nice canvas and our skin is like a canvas. If nobody is going to put painting on the dirty canvas, this is the same thing with our skin. It has to be clean and then put your makeup on, otherwise it's going to look absolutely awful. Ladies, welcome. Please tell us Thank what you. we are doing right and probably what we are doing wrong, which is what most of us do wrong anyway. And um, Suzanne is um, a licensed esthetician. You know, aesthet I have to tell you what I, I'm sure, you know, this is not a word that we hear very often. But this is a, a, from the French world, aesthetics. And aesthetician means the person who does skin care. And she is, you know, she went to school and she learned all about the skin, what, need, you know, the pores, how to do this and how to do that to minimize pores, how to clean in the evening, what to do, and what products we should use. So I'm just guessing, you know, because I know a little bit, but I'm sure she's an expert. She'll tell us more about it, and she'll tell us how to do right thing. Tell us, Susan. First of all, let me ask you, how did you start, you know, did you do, you know, something for yourself, and then, you know, little by little, you develop knowledge how to do skin care, then to went to school and be licensed, and then, you know, start working. Um, yes, this is all I've ever done. I started with Estee Lauder when I was 18, right out of high school, uh -huh. and um, went down the cosmetic management road that way, and then I um, went to Von Lee in Baltimore and got my esthetician license. I studied in Paris with uh, Jean-Pierre Jean Jean Bear, and um, after that, had a day spa for about eight years. Um, facials, massage therapy, that type of thing. And then, you know, now I'm a stay-at-home mom and I freelance and I see my clients at my house. So it's been about 23 years that I've been in wow. business. Yeah, you don't look that old to be, you know, 23 oh, years in business. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were just starting out. Wow, I'm impressed. See what the cosmetics do. How, so you have to tell us how to do it so it make it look the same too. Well, mm -hmm. I... I do believe in eye cream. I started, you know, eye cream is very important. A lot of people will just use a moisturizer all over. Uh -huh. um, and you really need to use a separate product for the eyes. The eyes are, uh, the skin is very different. There's no oil glands, there's no sweat glands, and it's the skin, thinnest skin on the body. Also, we use it. We move it constantly. So it's very important that you use a separate so it, eye it cream. So it actually may have to use eye cream because it's formulated different than the regular cream. That's right. It? Okay. Yes. That's just and you one can't thing just you buy have it, to you, learn. Yes. You must use it morning and night. It has to be on your skin all the time for it to work. I have a lot of clients. They buy it, and six months later, they still have half a jar. You know, it doesn't work. You have to use it morning and night. Regularly. And is it important to use the same brand or did you, or they say, well, I don't know if this is true or not, that, you know, you, your skin kind of uh, get tired of one product and you need to re reintroduce to something else. It's a different product for the same thing. No, that's not true. I think in this area, because we have such extremes between the summer and the winter, the summer is very humid. Um, so our skin is a little bit different than it is in the winter uh -huh. where it's, oh, I see. it's very dry. So you might need to switch that up a little bit. But otherwise, no, it's not like your hair where your hair will kind of build up a residue and you uh -huh. need to switch cleansers. 
it's not the same, but you may need to switch based on the season or as your skin changes with age and hormones. Can you tell us the routine? Let's say first thing in the morning, let's say you get up and you know, what, what do you do? How do you, do you use soap or this is no, no? Okay, so in the morning, I, I find you, you're waking, you've woken up, your skin, well, hopefully you've cleansed the night before, so you don't have makeup on, but as right. we sleep, we purge, we detoxify, and it is very important to cleanse in the morning. I like to exfoliate in the morning or use my Clarisonic in the morning um, just to kind of get all of those impurities off and then follow with a toner. And your cleanser oh, and toner yeah. should be in the same brand because it's a partnership, they work together. I see. So yeah. whatever pH um, your cleanser, you know, Yeah, it's the same in the next product. Yes, okay. then your toner uh -huh. is going to adjust that. And then I usually will wait, you know, give the skin a chance to kind of um, settle down from your shower. Oh, you don't do it just immediately. Yeah, you cleanse you and tone I together see. immediately. Uh -huh. And then give your, you know, your skin a chance to adjust. And then go into your serums. And I like to use, um, Serums during the day that have antioxidants that protect the skin. Don't go a lot of lines. Or will something maybe with the retinol. No, no, no. I, I really recommend that at night because that thins the skin and uh. you're out in the sun. So you want to use your exfoliating products, your retinols, your salicylics, glycolics at night because you're not exposed to the sun. So during the day, you use your antioxidants to protect. Your hydrators are pretty under makeup. They plump up your skin. Uh -huh. And then at night, go in with your exfoliators. I see. Well, did That's you, what I did recommend. You, did you hear that? <laughs> I hope you, you understand what she said. But is it, you know, do you have to use astringent? Is this very important? Um, you know, if you're going to go down that road, you really need to be working with a doctor because that you you need to know what exactly how much estrogen you need so I don't mm -hmm. I don't deal with that well, let me ask you also when you let's say now when you when you travel let's say you try not to bring you know the whole you know cosmetic everything what you have we have to really be selective because you know you have first of all you cannot bring it very much and uh, and there I once I found one product very brand a brand name product that can be used for mo for day and night, and that was you know just a, um, a, s a saving in my suitcase, sure. you know, my uh, cosmetic bag, uh, took less time. Is this something that you 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 can recommend? You know, because it says it's good for daytime, and it doesn't really make does it. Is it such a? I mean, it is such a thing, but is, it, uh, is this a product that can really do same thing for day or night? So if you just want a good basic moisturizer morning and night you know, to travel with, a nice gentle cleanser, a nice gentle moisturizer morning and night, you're good, and then get your sunscreen and your foundation, and, and bring an eye cream. Then I think that's... Eye cream, yeah. yeah. So this is cleanser, a really simple Cleanser, moisturizer, after. eye cream, and as long as yeah, you have Yeah, this is the three very basic items we have, to, you know, to carry with us, and the rest is, you know, makeup. After this, you know, your face is hopefully clean, and you can put your makeup on the clean, uh, you know, face, like a clean canvas. So I'm right. Uh, mm -hmm. You are. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. I, need, I hope you are learning too, because this is, this is really very important. Because of the, you know, this is the climate here, very um, changeable. Like a, this winter, we had a really harsh winter. Yes. And the skin really, you know, you, you can see on your skin, of course, you know. And also, do you recommend everyday um, sunscreen lotion, which I'm using really most of the time, sunscreen, you know, the rain or shine, I use sunscreen lotion before anything else. Would you do it before anything else? This is how I do I don't know. I'm just guessing that I should do like that. That's how I do it. Okay, so your sunscreen, you want to have it over top of your moisturizer. You don't want it right on the skin because there are a lot of chemicals in sunscreens, no matter, even if you're using a physical block, there are chemicals there. Uh -huh. So you want it over top of your moisturizer and underneath of your foundation. If you're going to be outside for less than an hour, including a car ride, then you can just go with your foundation that typically has a 15 in it. So this, oh, uh -huh, there, most of them have a, like a 15 or... Sure, uh, but you yeah. still need sunscreen on the decollete and on the hands. I keep a sunscreen in my car for my hands. You know, I use that as my hand cream in the car. I see. Because I that see. really, you know, you really need to keep that area protected. Uh -huh. What about the, the facial? Uh, very important. Every four weeks. Every four weeks? 
Okay, what do you do? You, can you do? Can you tell us something that we can do at home instead of going, you know, to see you? Mm -hmm. Sure. At home, if you wanted to do a mini facial, remove your makeup with a cleanser, yeah. and then a, like a lotion or an oil-based cleanser, remove all your makeup, and then go ahead and do a deep pore cleansing with your Clarisonic and a foaming cleanser. Okay. And then you could do, um, if, you, if your skin isn't overly sensitive, you could go ahead and use a granular exfoliant. Mm -hmm. And then mask. And if you're an oily mask. acne prone, do a clay. If you're a drier clay skin, mask, okay. do a cream. Mm -hmm. I see. So the mask, you know, we have to do like a once a week. Wow, this is a big job. But if you want to look beautiful, we have to do it. Anyway, the beauty hurts and takes time. <laughs> That's right. And if I could add to, to that, I'm not an esthetician. I fell into this a number of years ago. You know, like in the 70s, most of the time I spent my time wearing my makeup badly and having trouble with skin. Nice. And so I had, I found things on my own that worked. And then as I began working with, you know, a company clients, like Chanel yeah. or anybody uh -huh. else, uh -huh. it was because of my own need to help somebody solve a skincare issue or find something with enhancement. Uh -huh. So that's kind of where I came from. But I found that consistency is the key. So getting your facials every four weeks is a really great idea, but it's what you do on a daily basis. Uh -huh. So that, for example, when somebody has a wedding two days before, you can get a facial the day before the wedding because you've been consistent to that point. The people that make the mistake of never, never doing much of their skin, uh, getting a facial. They shouldn't and then, do it on the day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I know that. But if you're consistent, you're going to get more consistent results. But people kind of want the magic pill and they don't want to, as I say, mm -hmm. put this by your toothbrush and do it twice a day. But if you do that, then you have skin that you feel like she was born with it, I was born with it, we work at it and we maintain it. I see. But I everybody can have it. For example, when you do, when you do a facial at home, this is, do you put some kind of herbs in the water? And then, you know, you, uh, you steam your face. I put, you know how I do it. I put some herbs, whatever I have, dry herbs. I don't know if he's right. This is kind of, you know, something that I do on my own. And then I put my face on the, the you know, pot of wo the boiling water and the towel over my head. But in, in the water, I put some kind of whatever herbs I have, dry herbs. Do you think this is good? Sure, you can do herbs. Um, herbs are very mild. Um, you can use tea, which would, you know, be really good around the eye area. And you can also, at the health food stores, pick up your essential oils, which are a little bit more concentrated than herbs. So if you're dry, you can do the lavender. If you're oily, you can do the tea tree. Oh, you but can, sure, oh, you this can, is good. Yeah, yeah, just add a couple drops to your warm water. Herbs are fine, or your essential oils are so oh, easy good. to find From out, too. Oh, good. From now on, I will put some or oil. Both. I didn't you do this before. Yeah. So, see, yeah. this is another thing I learned today. Who knows what else I will learn today. So, next time when you see me, I'll look much younger. <laughs> <laughs> you look beautiful. And I think also, you know, you can go to the drugstore and try to find the cleanser, or try to find the toner, uh -huh. or the mask. But I think a lot of people, I used to sell um, a direct sales line, and I think people were intimidated about going to the malls or to the department stores mm -hmm. yeah, and getting for that kind of instruction. And they have so they would do it in their kitchen at home with a direct salesperson. That's fine. But when you go to the department store and you find a department or a counter that you feel like you can really trust, you can try things before you buy them. That's really the best way to experience a good skin care regimen because now every store, if you don't like it, you can use half this bottle and they will take it back anymore. Oh, so it's a fail this safe is good thing. to know. But this if, is, I did not know. Absolutely. That. If you go to, you know, CVS or Walgreens, you get it, they have a harder time, you know, accepting product back. So not to be intimidated that there are people that work oh. in those counters because we want to help people look great, feel great, or or find that solution. And they'll probably buy, buy more next time. And find time. that solution, exactly. Oh, There's see. a lot of integrity so in So you cosmetics. agree, you know, that with the uh, uh, drugstore products, products are still good. We don't have to spend like a thousands of dollars like some of the creams are. Once there. you know what you're looking for, then go back to the drugstore and you know, I know that I need that product. But start with a professional that can really help you navigate uh -huh. through it. But we are all, I'm sure we are all confused. You see all these magazines, they're bombarding us with all these most beautiful things. Do we have to believe everything what they say or we really have to be careful and, you know, not to try everything what they are serving us? 
I think there's more than one way to get there. That's my point. There's many cars on the road. There's more than one car to get, you know, there's great skin care lines. You can choose the one that works for you. You don't have to say But you have to experiment, of course. You know, exactly. You have to experiment, you know, and try this. And I know I, I experiment with many, many, many products. You know, most of them is okay. That's why I have so many pencils, eye pencils. But the problem is when I, uh, they, uh, I have uh, some sharpeners. This morning I was looking, I think I, I have about seven, eight sharpeners because it's not one size fits all. Right. And because I don't buy one product, I just buy whatever is on sale. <laughs> I don't not one product, which is, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe I should just try one that it fits me the best and then try using the same thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most of us, you know, are experimenting all the time and to, to see which, you know, is working for us or not. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, you know, we are not recommending any particular product, but you have to go and you know, try on yourself, and you, maybe you are allergic, then you have to, you know, go to s something which is a, uh, which is, you know, this tested on, on animals that probably have more uh, ingredients that are more suitable for your skin. Well, that's the key. It's just like when you grocery shop, you need to look at the label and read the ingredients. And yeah, that's true. As you learn what products work for you, if you've been paying attention to the ingredients, what ingredients work and what don't, it's more important than the claim is what's actually in the bottle. I see. Well, this is, you know, something we, you know, we have to read. But, but this, unfortunately, these ingredients are so small you can hardly see and there are some strange name that we don't even understand what they are so how do we distinguish which ingredients are good or which are not well you want to make sure if it there are there are lines out there that still use alcohol and it'll just say alcohol and sometimes it's the second ingredient so don't buy it and then there's the sodium lauryl sulfates you want to make sure you what do about, not what use about those. let me ask you what about the mineral oil if is it something in mineral is this is good or not because this i have a uh, mix in, in the green, uh, mix uh, opinions about it no it can really clog your pores up it's bad for your eyes it is mm -hmm. oh well you know some you know i hear you know different so i don't know you have to try and see how it, but i i know from the source that um, they said you know you shouldn't get anything with the mineral oil in it so this sure. is right. Yes. Okay. What else we shouldn't do? Uh, what else shouldn't we do? Uh, nothing with soap. Nothing with alcohol. Oh, no soap. Even they said face soap. No, no soap. No soap. Really? Oh, I like soap. Well, you can use a foaming <laughs> like cleanser. Like there's some lines that have soap. Well, no, it's a bar, just. but it's right. not a soap. Not body. Not body. body oh soap. no 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 yeah. no. Well, there's no. even facial bars. That, yeah, are that, soap. Is, that are soap, just you know, for the for the face. Because it completely tears down the pH balance of the skin, and you really it, the skin has to work very hard to but build it back up. But there are some of them. I think they are very mild that you can still. Well, I think that there are soap-free bars. There are good bars out there, but they are made out of um, coconut oil. They're made out glycerin. of essential oils, yeah. glycerin. Uh -huh. They're soap-free. They're, they're so lovely. you don't use you don't use soaps. No. What about the, 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 the cleansing, the cleansing toilets, you know, that you buy? How, how about that? The makeup remover uh, wipes? remover. Yeah, so if you want to clean, at nighttime, you remove your makeup, and you can use a wipe kind of around the eye area. You need to get some water in there, though. The wipe's not going to do it all without some water. And then you want to go ahead and cleanse, because removing your makeup isn't cleansing. It's a separate step. Especially since, you know, your makeups are very long wearing, they've got sunscreen in them. So first you want to take your makeup off and then you want to cleanse and they're separate. No, no, but I, I use, you know, this cleansing, you know, especially when I travel and I like one that are dry, not wet. Mm -hmm. So you dry, you know, first of all, they are uh, lighter, you know, to, for, uh, to carry. And the other thing is I like, you know, I, I like to wet when I need and then, you know, I think that, you know, are good. And, it's, and, and I use the soap, I think, you know, I don't feel <laughs> clean unless I use the soap. I don't know if this, I, shouldn't, I should stop it or not. Well, maybe but it's um, just a foaming cleanser. It might not actually have soap in it. You'd have to look at the ingredients. Ingredients. Well, okay, well, this is another job we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think also from a layperson, let your skin tell you what it likes and doesn't like. 
Uh -huh. You know, because I can, back in the day when it was the bar of soap and the alcohol-filled toner and something that was like butter in a jar that you replace dryness with, my skin was too sensitive to that. So when I'm working with clients where we freelance, I will say, your skin should feel comfortable at every step of cleansing. Uh -huh. So don't think that being clean means feeling dry and tight and that I have my toner or my moisturizer to, or my cream that I use. Uh -huh. I'll generally find out if your skin's comfortable, you won't need a cream. Maybe you'll do a lighter lotion. So let your skin, you know, let tell your you skin tell do. you what it likes. Exactly. Well, but comfortable at every step is the key. Well, you know, what else we shouldn't do, tell us. You know, like you, you know, I'm sure m m most of us do, do, you know, something that we are not supposed to do and that it's harmful. For Don't go our to bed skin. with makeup on. Right. Cleanse, very mm -hmm. important. Cleanse. Um, and before we go to bed, we have, no matter how tired we are, we have to take off our makeup. I know that. Even if, you know, if we. Does it age you the way they say? Like if you sleep with your makeup, it ages you two to three years for every time or? I don't think it ages you two to three years. Every time you sleep with your makeup on, I'd look like 100 by now. Because I'm 27, <laughs> so that's what I did for like, no, I'm kidding. No, but it, you know, you really can't detoxify. And it's especially bad if you ever break out, you know, to sleep with your makeup on, I think. You know, anybody who's ever had any breakout problems in those. So really what do you do if, you know, if you have some pimples? You know, do they have, they have now some kind of uh, sticks that you put on and reduce the redness, and especially if, if you have something important coming on, and then, you know, probably from nervousness, nerves, and you, you know, break up. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in this? It's, it's absolutely an emergency. You have to look your best. It's absolutely an emergency and you have a breakout. Um, I would use salicylic acid and then something with some kaolin in it. And, and then cover up. Yeah, well you'd have to sleep with the clay on it overnight to dry, you know, do your salicylic acid. Uh -huh. and salicylic acid is a little different than glycolic um, because it actually breaks down the oil, whereas glycolic just kind of breaks down the glue and helps the skin slough off. So do that and then go ahead with um, like the Mario Baduska, the little, you know, or any of the kale and clays, but put it on thick like it's... Um, so in the morning will be... It'll dry dark. it up. It'll, it'll, should, you know, it depends on how big it was to begin with, but it'll certainly, you be know, better. be reduced Minimizing. in size and then you can cover it And it could cover, cover with, it the, with the makeup after, you know, you know, well, that's good, that's good tip. Any other good tips you can tell us now? Visine w can remove redness mm -hmm. from a blush. Oh, redness, yeah. yeah Visine yeah. can. Uh-huh. And did I understand um, uh, prep, like preparation, preparation H can yeah. reduce puffiness underneath the eye? Hmm. Yeah. It shrinks everything oh, everywhere. Good. So it's so a double duty. Up and down, you can use it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. You can also use toothpaste on your blemish if you don't have any, uh, if you're traveling and you don't have anything else. Toothpaste, but not not every toothpaste. You know, some like of those, a, they like come creamy one. They come not they come gel. in gel or two. You know, two yeah. but not that. You know, not gel, just the one that are creamy type. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. See, I guess. If the you dry. don't have anything else, yeah. I guess the dry. Right. And uh, the other, this is a little emergency thing that we really should know how to you know deal um, because they are very important. And anything else? Oh. About the travel, um, yeah, you know, traveling, yeah. There's a number of stores that are really generous about facialing or um, sampling Sam foundations uh -huh. and things like that. I have a little trove of containers that are easy to clean out today, exactly. and you know, I'm really so thankful that you came today. You know, just um, tell us maybe something else before we close. Tell me, you know have to go away and we uh, have to keep watching. We are going to have more tips, of course, you know, our next shows about next step, which is, of course, makeup. But, you know, now we have to uh, clear up something, you know, more with Susan because she's an expert. And anything else you can tell us, you know, let me don't do? 
Well, I just think getting your facials on a regular basis, being consistent with your routine, using everything that you can possibly use to protect the skin during the day, and then sticking with your exfoliations. And, and also, you are not recommending to spend thousands of dollars on different cream. You should go to a drugstore and, and experiment with uh, different creams and see which one is mm -hmm. agreeable to your skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. some, there are some, I spend a little bit more on eye cream than I will on a facial moisturizer. Um. So what, what, just tell me uh, something quickly, uh, what ingredients we should look for, for eye cream, which is a very important. Yeah, so eye cream, you don't necessarily want a lot of exfoliants, you want all of your antioxidants, your A, C, and E. Um, you also want your hyaluronic acid, which is a hydrator in in your moisture, okay, in your eye and no mineral, and no mineral, mineral oil. Well, me, I think we learn a lot today. I would like to thank you very much for watching, and uh, so it was so informative, and and I'm so thankful to Peggy and Susan for coming today and showing us all these tricks of the trade. Thank you very, very much for watching, and don't forget to turn on again for another exciting guest. We always have exciting guests, I'm sure you know by now. And um, I thank you for watching, and this is all the FTs reporting for Fashion Notes. Bye-bye.